Hello everyone, welcome to Skilled Dev. Trey here, and in this question, we will be working through target to some. It's really essential to understand what's going on in this lesson. It's a very common and classic coding interview question. It's one that's still asked frequently, or variants of it are still asked frequently, and I've even seen it a few times myself. But more importantly, what we learn here will really be built off of into more complex questions. So these questions will be higher in difficulty, but the way you approach them and the techniques you use to optimize your solution will be the exact same. So diving in, we see that we're given an array of integers as the input and also a target integer. We want to know which pairs of values in the array will sum to this target. So looking at the sample input, we have the indexes zero through five and see that the values negative three and 13 will sum to 10 and the values two and eight will sum to 10. So for the output result, we return an array of arrays where we combine the pairs of indexes. And now we need to take a look at our constraints. I can't tell you how many times I've been giving an interview and the candidate just dives in and starts working the problem before they really understand what it's asking or how their solution should look. And unfortunately, this will pretty often lead to a not passed interview. So we really wanna dive in here and see if we can understand each of these constraints. And the first constraint is that we want to prioritize runtime complexity over memory. So what this is saying is, hey, bring that big O time down as much as possible. I don't care if you add data structures, add more memory, get big O low. And this is very often the constraint you'll uh, assume to have. You really want to focus on optimizing your time, but here it's just explicitly stating that. The next constraint is that an item cannot match with itself. So we know that we have a five in the array and five plus five is 10, but we can't say the same index is a pair. So this does not count towards our solution. And then the final two constraints say the same pair of indexes should only be included once and that the order in which they're returned does not matter. So when we have our negative three and 13, we include one and three, and we don't also include three and one. So you could have three and one, you could have one and three. The constraints say both are acceptable, just don't put both one pair in the results for each correct solution. And the most straightforward, maybe the most obvious way to handle this is the brute force solution where you just compare each item to every other item in the array. So maybe even how you would think of it if, if you were solving this by hand. You would start with the first item, then scan down and add it to every other item and see if it matches 10. Our first iteration didn't give any results. We move on to negative three. We see that eventually three plus 13 equals 10. We add their indexes, continue on. And we do this for every single item. And the issue here is we have to have this nested loop. We iterate through the items and then do a lookup on the rest of the array. And we know this is gonna be O of N squared. And in an interview, you might say at the beginning or whenever you realize it, hey, I see there's gonna be a brute force solution. I could just compare all the items but unless you're stuck, maybe if you're stuck, you would wanna write some code down, but otherwise you wanna kind of quickly move on to better solutions if you have some ideas. And we wanna think, how can we be O of N squared? Well, we know that we can usually assume to sort for N log N time. And if we sort it, our items are now arranged by their values. And we can start a pointer at the beginning and the end and iterate inwards. And we know which side to move based on if the sum is, larger or smaller than the target. And we can keep iterating until we reach the middle. And this is good, but we, we really wanna think, hey, how can we, instead of using nested for loops, when we look to see if there's a match for our item, if our sum is the target, instead of doing that O of N lookup nested, we wanna see if we can do a constant time lookup. And the best way to do this is a hash table. We can bring our solution down to linear time with the trade-off of adding linear big O of N space. So the way the hash table is gonna work is you will add each element to it where the item from the array is the key and then its index is the value. And previously in the brute force solution, we were saying, hey, current item plus matching item equals target. Well, now if we just redo the math, we say, well, we know the target. 
If we subtract the current item, then we know what its matching item should be. And then we can just look in our hash table to see if that matching item exists in the array. So how it's gonna be solved is two loops. The first loop simply constructs our hash table. We add all the elements as the keys and the index as the value. Then we iterate through our array again. We start with six. We say we know the target 10, subtract six. If there's a four, it's a match. It's not, so we keep going. 10 minus negative three equals 13. Well, we see 13 in the hash table. We know it's index. We take the index of our negative three, add that to the results, and then we continue on. We see five. Hey, this is an edge case because five is in the table, but we only include it once. So if the index of the current item matches the index of the matched item, it's not added. Then we reach our 13. 10 minus 13 equals negative three. Well, hey, this is in the table, but this is another case we need to handle. We've already added the negative three and 13 match, so we just continue on. We do this again for the two and the eight, add it once, and now we have our solution. So we've gone from a brute force quadratic time solution to having two sequential for loops, which will only be big O of n linear time solution. Awesome, now that we've seen the logic to create the optimal solution, let's get into our code runner and work it through. But first, let's start with the brute force solution. So we'll see that we initialize our results array and then we'll just iterate through the input array for its entire length. And we, what we want to do is compare each item to every other item in the input array. So instead of starting our inner loop at zero, we'll actually start it at i plus one. This makes sure that we don't compare elements twice, we only compare them to the items after it in the input array, and we don't compare it against itself. And all we do is we say, hey, if the item at the i index plus the item at the j index is equal to our target, then we just push this to our results array. And then we return results. Let's see if our code runs and all our tests pass. So hopefully this solution is pretty straightforward for you. You see that all we do is compare items against every other item. However, it's not optimal. This is our O of N squared time, but it's only using space, constant space, because we don't add another data structure and the results data structure does not count against our time or space. So now that we understand the brute force solution, let's see what the optimal solution looks like. So we'll once again initialize our results array, but we'll also want to initialize our auxiliary data structure, which is going to be our hash table lookup table, which will let us find if we have a match in our input array with another item. So we're gonna initialize our input array or our input hash table. We'll add every element to it. And then we set its key to the element and its value to the index. And this is just going to be an O of N time and space. Now we'll iterate through our input array again. So here we say the current value is equal to the current index in the array that we're looking at. The match value, the one that we want to see if they sum to our target, is target minus current value. And now we look for the matched index, 
which is our array at value hash table. And we see if the match value exists, meaning that the, our current element has another item that sums to the target. You say if the matched index is greater than or equal to zero and matched index does not equal the current index, then we add the item to our results array. So what we're saying here is matched index greater or equal to zero. So we're looking just to see, hey, is this a valid array index value, which is zero through n. We also check if the matched index is equal to i, which is the current items index. So as we saw before, like five plus five is not allowed to equal 10 because it was can't be added to itself. We just make sure that we don't add items to itself, handle that constraint. And then after we use an item, we want to make sure that we will no longer count it. So we won't count something twice, handle our other constraint. So we're gonna just set the index to negative one for each value that we just used. And the reason I'm using negative one here is to get it out, to keep it an integer, but get it outside of that valid index range. And also this is common in JavaScript. If you look for an index or for an item in an array, if it doesn't exist, it simply returns negative one. So this is also idiomatic JavaScript. Let's run our code. And once again, all our tests passed. So we see here that this was an O of N operation, no additional space. So we had O of N plus O of N or O of two N, drop the constant. So we have O of N time, we added additional O of N space. So our, our optimal solution, O of N time, O of N space. And that's it. This is the optimal solution for target to sum. Uh, some other things to note are if our array value at index doesn't have a matching value, it actually returns undefined. And in JavaScript, if you do undefined is greater than or equal to zero, what happens it will, is it will coerce it and it, it will return false. So undefined greater or equal to zero is false. So that's how we know this will work for any or index value or an undefined value, the value is not found in our array. And that was target two sum. I'll see you on the next question.